Hola mis amores, this is Massey with Masparco DIYs. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, it's a little bit different. I put together some of your favorite DIYs I've done this past months. Let me know if you would like me to make more videos like this in the future and also let me know which DIY was your favorite. I hope you enjoy this compilation video and let's go ahead and start with the first DIY. For the first project, I'm using the sign from Dollar Tree and removing the heart. And gave the sign one coat of this paint. I want the sign to look distressed and older, so when I'm giving it the two coats of the gray paint, I'm letting the base paint show in some areas. I folded the sandpaper and sanded the lines in the middle. And sanded the rest of the sign for a distressed and weathered look. Then dry brush the sign with the same gray paint. These little plates at the party section at Dollar Tree and they are perfect because they're not heavy and they are the perfect size. I spray painted them with this Rust-Oleum white paint. Now that they're dry, I'm going to glue them on the sign. You can use Dollar Tree sticker letters, but I'm using these bigger letters I found at Hobby Lobby. In the borders of the plates black, I'm using a makeup sponge wedge from Dollar Tree. I'm using a piece of twine as the hanger and I made two nets on the back. I made a simple bow using this ribbon from Hobby Lobby and I glued it to the top of the sign. The second DIY, I found this container at Dollar Tree and the first thing I did was to spray paint it with the same spray paints from the previous DIY. Cut the little round part of the lid with the scissors. I gave the lid two coats of this brown paint, letting it dry between each coat. To add a little bit more dimension, I dry brushed some black paint. Then added on top a little bit more of the brown paint. the same thing with this little wood block from Dollar Tree. I'm 
using this container as the core only so I won't be opening the lid that's why I'm using hot glue and not super glue to glue the little block I got this stencil from Walmart I've used it on multiple DIYs so it's not that sticky anymore but that's okay since I'm planning on dry brushing white paint on top for a weathered look I dry brushed the white paint on top for a weather look and all around the bucket so it didn't look like spray paint. For the third DIY, I'm using two of these new gorgeous glass jars from Dollar Tree. I'm going to spray paint them with this Rust-Oleum Perfect Gray paint. I personally love to stress an old looking jars so I'm sanding both with the sandpaper then dry brushing white paint on top. And I'm gluing a cute little bow on the top. The eucalyptus picks are from Walmart, they were super inexpensive and they have a really good quality. For the vase, I'm using this two Dollar Tree wood palette. I'm attaching them together with two big crafting sticks. When gluing the sticks, I left space between the crates so it looks like one piece. To paint them, I mixed a little bit of water with the same brown paint I used on the previous DIY. To add more dimension, I mixed a little bit of water with black paint too and painted some areas then went on top with the brown mix. For the fourth DIY, I'm using two plastic plates from Dollar Tree and a candlestick. The details on these plates are beautiful but they are too shiny so I'm spray painting them with this Rust-Oleum Perfect Grey. I also painted the candlestick. Then decided to paint another candlestick and one of the plastic little party plates I showed on DIY number one to make the tray taller. Sanded both ends of the candlestick and glued it to the big plate. And glued the small plate on top with super glue and hot glue. On the bottom of the big plate, I'm gluing five of the little wood blocks from Dollar Tree. Painted them with the same brown paint and water mix from the previous DIY. Then 
and I flipped the tray again and glued the second candlestick upside down, making sure it was centered. Glue the little plastic plates on top. I think the tray looks super beautiful as is right now, but I want mine to have more of a farmhouse look. So I dabbed white paint with a clean makeup sponge wedge. Then use another sponge to do the borders with black paint and I repeated the same steps all around the tray on every plate. On the top tray, I placed this farmer's market bucket from Dollar General and it was only $1. I'll be using this container that I got from the party section at Dollar Tree and also this candle holder. With this very really white paint, I'm giving my pieces two coats. Here I'm sanding the parts where I'm adding the glue so they can bond better. With my sandpaper, I'm sanding all the details this gorgeous container has and I'll be doing the same thing for the candle holder. to distress this piece even more by sanding other areas, sanding in only one direction and I did this to make it look older. Finally, for the lid, I did the same thing. I sanded all the details I wanted to stand out. These stencils are also from Walmart and I actually got this because I wanted to use the little cow but once I finished with the project it looked more like a candy jar so I decided to use this five cents and now it really is going to look like an old vintage candy jar. For this stencil I'll be using this black paint and a piece of a sponge. For projects like this, I love using my hair dryer. It just makes everything so much easier by drying everything fast. Now remove the stencil very carefully and if you have any mistakes from the paint bleeding outside the stencil or inside the stencil, just brush some white paint and that will take care of it. Since I want this piece to look very vintage and old, I decided to dry brush some white paint on top and dry brushing just means that you have almost no paint on your brush. 
I made a super cute and simple bow using some leftover ribbon that I have from Walmart. I wanted to glue it on the top but the details are so pretty that I decided to glue it in between both pieces. I found this container at the party section at Dollar Tree and I filled it with this white rocks and some succulents from Dollar Tree too. To complete this piece, I used one of the stencils. I used the black paint and I did the same thing all around the container. I didn't measure any space or anything like that. Super simple. going to use two wood trays from Dollar Tree. We're going to glue them together to create a bigger tray. Now I'm giving my piece two coats of the Waverly White paint. I'm distressing the tray. Since I don't want any harsh lines for this project, I'm blending everything with a little bit of white paint and then blending it more with the sponge. foams came four in a pack and they are perfect for this DIY. I just glue all four inside the tray. These gorgeous peachy pink roses are from Dollar Tree and I used one of these stems and three of the white ones. I cut them with a the wire cutter and inserted them inside the foam. What I did is I placed the peachy pink roses in a zigzag kind of like a wave motion and then the white ones I just placed them everywhere where I had the empty spaces. Fill any empty spaces and give this piece more volume. I'm adding little pieces of little stems that I already had. burlap flowers are from Dollar Tree and I decided to add them in the center of the arrangement for that farmhouse rustic look I love. And to complete this piece I made two simple small bows to glue to the sides. First, let's remove the paper. I was super, super surprised how easy this paper was to remove. Give it two coats of paint. Here I'm using the same Waverly White paint I've used in the previous DIYs. center and lay another one next to it without overlapping them. This one is going to come up soon since this is our spacer and we are going to keep reusing it. Now place another strip and remove your spacer and put it on the other side so we can add another stripe. Remove the spacer again and keep repeating the same steps.
repeat the same steps on the other side starting with the spacer. I added a little piece of tape on the top there because I didn't want any paint to get in that space. Paint all the white areas gray. Once the paint is completely dry, you can remove the tape. Now we are placing the tape in the other direction and repeat the same steps exactly like you see me doing here. two coats of the same gray paint we used before. Now that the paint is completely dry, do not remove any of the tape that's on. We are replying the vertical stripes like we did on the first steps. You can see the dark stripes, don't cover those. Add the tape on the lighter ones. Without removing any tape, give everything two coats of black paint. Once the black paint is completely dry, you can start peeling all the tape. Fix any mistakes with a brush and the same color. My camera decided to stop recording, so I had to record the clip of me painting this wheel again. That's why it looks different. I painted the top piece of the wheel pink and the wheel black and white, and I added little shadows using the white and gray color. around the pink with the sharpie painted the bottom piece black and I painted the window black and gray and I added shadows using the same pink color If you like it the way it looks right now, it looks super cute, you can stop right here but I decided to distress it a little bit more since I want my truck to look older so I distress it with some white paint. With this stencil from Walmart, I'm using a little cow and I placed it on the bottom of the door and I painted it with the same color. I then painted the stickers to match the truck and distressed them with white paint. I already had this little piece of wood, but you can use anything else to add here. Before I added the hearts, I glued some leaves I already had, then I glued the hearts on top. I stamped XO on the big heart and added little hearts on the pink part of the wheel. the heart and sanded some of the glue off with the sandpaper.
With this paint color, I'm giving my sign two coats. Don't forget to stain the sides too. Now with a clean paper towel, I'm wiping down going in the same direction. I'm adding more dimension by dry brushing some black paint. Then brushing more wood stain in random areas and wiping it down again. I dry brushed some white paint going in the same direction and more wood stain. Wipe it down again. Keep adding more stain or more paint until you are satisfied with how it looks. This bucket is also from Dollar Tree. You don't have to paint it, you can leave it just like this and it will look super cute, but I want to paint it white. When the paint dried, I sanded some areas with the sandpaper. I want to add more details to this piece, so I took two big crafting sticks, measured them, then cut to size. Sand the corner so the cut doesn't look too rough. I then used the same wood stain for the two pieces I just cut. I'm brushing some of the brown paint I used to paint the sign, then blending it. Glue the sticks and sand in some areas for a more natural look. Since the hot glue won't be enough to glue the bucket to the sign, I'm also using E6000 glue. Make sure the bucket is centered and exactly where you want it to be and let it dry for a few hours. You can put something inside that's a little bit heavy so the bucket stays in place until it dries. I forgot to press record when I put this tacks, but I removed one to show you guys how I did it. I cut the longer piece of the tack with the wire cutter, added glue and put the tack on top of the glue. Then I gave it little hits with the wire cutter and I did the same for the rest. Once the glue holding the bucket was completely dry and ready, I filled the bucket with gift wrapping paper because the greenery that I'm placing inside is not long enough. I already had this greenery, but you can use any flower or plants you like. I am making a bow with this ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I'm just going to make a simple and small bow and I'm going to glue it to the bucket. And for the final step to hang this piece, I use a piece of twine from Dollar Tree.
apply, I'll be using this ball I found on Target for a couple of cents, this luau skirt from Dollar Tree, and the inside roll that holds the ribbon. After I'm using a ribbon, I almost never throw this away since there's a lot you can DIY with them. First step is to glue the bottom piece in the bottom center of the bowl. I use E6000 glue and hot glue. Now I'm making the braids using the skirts. Dollar Tree has two skirt sizes. This one is the small one. I use two of these. Your laughter takes me to heaven. I just want to make you repeat it and repeat it again. Yeah, you make the sky so blue. No, nothing's complicated. Babe. To secure the ends of the braids, I apply glue and cut the excess off. I then rolled the first braid to glue it to the center inside the bowl. Apply glue to glue another braid around that one and I'll keep repeating the same step until I have all the inside of the bowl covered all the way to the top. Once that was done, I started gluing the braids on the outside, making my way down to cover the whole piece. I also painted the part inside to hide all the glue. Make sure to leave the bottom flat. These decor balls are also from Dollar Tree. I was only able to find these two at my Dollar Tree. I would love to find at least two more, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and use these and I'm gonna give them two coats of white paint painted some areas with this gold acrylic paint not perfect since we are adding more paint on top this is just so a little bit of gold can pop out at the end and they are not too white inside the basket i'm adding some greenery i already had the balls were painted and this little one's also from the latrine you can add inside the basket anything you like or you can also leave it empty it's up to you we can make it together let the wind blow all we need is each other come take my hand yeah all that i have now i won't second diy i found this splatter screen at dollar tree and i removed the center and christmas is my favorite time of year it's beginning to look like all my wishes are coming true that's why i cheer i've been busy decking the halls i've been kind to big and small and now it's time to have a merry holiday what a feeling once that was done i took a target dollar spot wreath and opened it and cut it in the center with a wire cutter I guess that spring and summer, they're all fine But I've been waiting for the season that's mine To make the two little bells, I got this little cups from Dollar Tree With a small screwdriver, I open a hole in the top and also use it to paint the bells Snowflakes fall, I can hear the sleigh bells call. They're saying it's time to have a merry holiday. With a piece of black yarn, I'm hanging the little cups. Now it's time for Christmas. And Christmas is my favorite time of year. It's beginning to look like all my wishes. 
are coming true. That's why I. To make the clapper, I spray painted a Dollar Tree stick gold, then cut two little pieces. I've been kind to big and small, and now it's time to have a merry holiday. You can also use a little bell from Dollar Tree or anything else you want to to create the bell clappers. Let's sing a carol and we'll bring it here. Let's sing a carol and we'll bring it here. Let's sing a carol and we'll bring it. And to finish the wreath, I made a bow. Okay, Miss Amores, thank you so, so much for watching today's video, and I will see you soon. Bye!